Blessed be God forever. Today we are going to read Psalm 121, Psalm 121, from verse 5 to verse 8. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shed at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. Now, we'll get to verse 6 and find something very interesting. The sun shall not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. What? The sun is absolutely essential to life. There is nothing that lives in this world without the light of the sun. Nothing that is alive functions except by the light of the sun. Human beings, trees, animals, birds, fish, anything. Things function by the light of the sun. Now, but can that same sun become dangerous? Yes. He said, the sun shall not strike you by day. That means the sun has the ability to strike. We have issues of sunburn. We have issues of sun being destructive to situations. Sometimes the sun being the one we call too high and it has become a problem. There are people who get sick and they have to be kept away from the sun. Now this is the sun that is essential to their life. But this is the same sun that is also destructive to them. When you have such situations, it only gives us an idea of the fact that the ordinary things of life that are normal can be destructive at the same time as they are building up. And there is a takeaway we have to get from this verse. And that is this. The things you call essential to life and take as normal can become very destructive to life. If the sun can become dangerous to life, then it means that we know nothing. What do I mean by that? All of what we know is that the sun is essential to life, which is true. But that same sun is also destructive to life in certain situations and circumstances. All things being equal, the sun is wonderful. All things not being equal, the sun can be destructive. And I know in life, all things are never equal. All things are equal is like Talking about utopia, some situation that everything is in perfect shape. Nothing ever works in perfect shape. This passage is telling us something very important. If God is not taking care of you, there is nothing you can do about yourself. Because the most normal things, the most essential things of your life can be the same things that destroy you. The moon with its wonderful ambience. When the moon is out, if you are privileged to walk under the moon at night, oh, you will enjoy everything. And if it's in a peaceful area where you don't have distractions by cars or anything and you walk around, oh, it's a beautiful thing. But would that same moon now become a problem? The passage is saying that wonderful thing can be disastrous. That same situation you so admire and things are going well when it comes around, that same thing can become a point of destruction if God is not preserving you. He said, the Lord is your keeper. Don't depend on what you know. Depend on him. He's the only one who knows what is inside. It's only God who can explain how the same son that gives life becomes the same son that destroys life. It's only God who knows why the same son that makes a plant generate is the same son that kills the same plant. It's only God who knows how the best things of life can become the worst things of life. What do we know? We know on the surface. We know according to what we call science. And I like to say this. I appreciate science. I extol them so much. But boy, these theories of science have changed and changed and changed and changed. At a point, they could even become unreliable. Because the theories are changing. The only consistent and unchanging story comes from God. Whatever God says, that stands forever. So by science, we wouldn't know. We'll have the explanations. We'll have all of the equations and all of that. But none of those things really tell us why they happen. They tell us what happens, not why. And every conjecture as to why, give it another two years, another person will come up with his own. Which means the first conjecture was not right. And even the next one won't be right because give it another couple of months, another person will alter it. 
Only God knows everything about life. Only God knows that your life that looks good, how terrible it can become. Only God knows the same food that satisfies you can become the one that poisons you and you are dead. God knows all of those things. Depend on him. He is your keeper. He said he will preserve your soul. And he will preserve your going out and your coming in. Because as you step out, all of you see the blank atmosphere. You don't know what is in it. And you know in this world, there are so many things in the atmosphere that we pass through. Just take a simple instance. Now you are listening to this word. By what method? The thing that passed through the atmosphere. Wherever you are sitting and listening to these words, pictures and every kind of thing is passing around you. You don't notice it. Except the fellow who has the equipment, that's the one that will notice it. And even then, it's limited to him and his equipment. But it's God who knows all of it. The world is not blank. It's filled by demons, filled by everything, filled oh boy, the things we may never ever see. And the things that nobody will see except he gets to heaven. But God sees them all and knows the effects of all of those things. When you see the blank atmosphere, know that there is danger in it if God does not preserve you from it. That is why he preserves your going out and your coming in. That is why he preserves your soul because there are so many things that are attacking the soul that you would not ever have an idea of. Or maybe in eternity we will come to understand if you are going to heaven. But who even knows if such knowledge will be important again. Praise the Lord today who helps you. Praise the Lord today who preserves you. If you belong to him, know that he is your preserver. Father, preserve your own. Thank you for preserving us all along. To say preserve your own might be wrong, but it's just a way of expression. Thank you, Lord, for taking care of us. We know nothing. We see nothing. We pass through this world. We don't know what is going on. Thank you for your help. Thank you for your direction. Thank you. For preserving everyone in and out of life. In Jesus name. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with you. Now and forevermore. Amen. Mm -hmm.